All right, guys, in this video, we're talking about the all new 2023 Colorado and why it's interesting and what we like and don't like about it. Um, so this truck is supposed to come out, um, go for sale sometime in the middle of next year. Um, gone are the days of the 2023s coming out halfway through 2022. Um, you'll be lucky if you get a 2022 during 2022 with how vehicles are coming out these days with shortages and everything else. But um, Chevy obviously wanted to get the jump on the new Tacoma that's going to come for 2024 and um, a couple other trucks that are going to have some updates. So they started releasing information on the Colorado pretty early and they're calling it a 2023, which is going to be more like a 2024 release, but whatever. Um, pretty excited about it. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about it a little bit and I'm going to make, I made a spreadsheet to compare it to some other trucks I'm looking at because I'm still trying to get rid of the Ram and I'm still not sure what I want. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit and see what Chevy wants us to be excited about. So 430 foot pounds of torque, that's a big deal. We'll talk about that in a minute. That is a lot of torque in a mid-sized truck. Um, 10 available cameras, cute. Um, it does have a camera option of a camera underneath it, which is cool for driving your obstacles. Um, 7,700 pound towing, that's pretty excellent. Um, that's going to tow what 95% of people need to tow. Uh, they're in the mid-sized truck market. That'll tow a pretty big boat. That'll tow a lot of four-wheelers. They'll also tow another vehicle, like another truck on a pretty light trailer. And 17 class leading available tie downs. That's actually pretty nice. A lot of these small trucks, like my Gladiator, did not have enough tie downs. and It was pretty frustrating. Um, my Ram doesn't even have that many tie downs. Um, so I do like that Chevy gives you a lot of tie downs in the bed. Uh, let's go through the website a little bit more before we go to the spreadsheet. Obviously the one I would get is the ZR2. Um, they all have the same motor now, all these different trucks. They added a Trail Boss. Um, one thing that's interesting is that the Trail Boss and the ZR2 both are significantly wider track width than the other ones. You can see that the fender flares look a little different. Um, that's because they're like three or four inches wider track width, I think. So that's kind of cool. Um, I don't think I don't know yet if the suspension has more travel or if they're just adding more wheel offset. Um, there's not that much information out yet, but I'm hoping they might have longer arms. Kind of doubt it, but we'll see. If it's anything like the ZR2, the old one, it's going to be a pretty serious package. And the ZR2 Silverado, it's a pretty bad bitch. Everyone loves how it rides, like the suspension and stuff. So it could be really cool. Um, it's got nice high clearance bumpers front and rear tucked up there. Optional side protection, 33-inch uh, tires. So I would probably get the ZR2, but, um, you know, for the push-button front and rear locker. If you get the Trail Boss, you just get the G80 in the rear, which is in every Chevy ever. It's an auto locker. It works great, but push-button locker is pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, so there you go. Um, that's what I would get for sure. And the interior is totally revamped. It looks kind of like the 2022 Silverado. we got the screen right here. Obviously not quite as spacious in here, but there's a lot of styling cues that were stolen from the Silverado ZR2 if you look at this. Very cool. 310 horsepower, pretty good horsepower, um, same as the Frontier, but 430 foot-pounds of torque, and it makes that torque at really low, like 3,500 RPMs, you got full torque, so pretty low RPMs. Uh, for a four-cylinder turbo to make that kind of torque. What else do they want us to be excited about? Um, there's like a storage area slash cooler built into the tailgate. It's a good idea. It's kind of wasted space in every other truck, so I guess I like it. A little gimmicky, but whatever. Um, it's got the same badass multi-spool type um, suspension on this truck as is on the ZR2 Silverado. Um, one big problem is this new 8-speed transmission. Why the hell GM didn't throw the 10 speed that they put in everything else in this? Uh, like that's in the Camaro and it's in the Silverado. I don't know. Um, the eight speed previously has been kind of a turd. A lot of people avoid it. They're saying it's new. It's got more, um, it's, they changed the tuning on it and it shifts smoother and smarter, but I really would like it to have the 10 speed. This is kind of a buzzkill for me. You do get that 10 speed in the Ranger. So that's one way the Ranger wins right there. Um, a lot of clever screens for towing and off-road stuff, which is great. My Ram was supposed to have that kind of stuff. Of course, it's missing because Ram just can't figure out anything. They're so disorganized. Um, there's your one of your camera views of under the truck to put your tires right on the rocks, which would be kind of nice. Um, yeah, okay. So that's all the information is now. Chevy doesn't actually tell you when it's coming out, but I've done some other research, and I think the earliest you could really buy one of these is halfway through next year. But... Um, They've released a lot of videos of it off-road. Uh, I haven't seen anyone get a press truck yet, but I'm sure that'll start happening soon. So let's go over to my spreadsheet I made. Um, so this is the trucks I'm considering right now. Um, 
This is updated as of like yesterday. So Pro 4X, 5.3 Chevy, LT, Max Toe. Um, 6.2 Chevy ZR2, Tundra, TRD Off-Road, and the new Colorado. Um, so let's talk about torque first. So if you compare the Colorado to the other trucks in the segment, um, it's got the most torque, except for the Raptor Ranger, which it ties. And the Raptor Ranger is going to be, you know, that's a, that's a step up, right? Um, obviously, the Raptor Ranger would be cool if I was interested in ever buying a Ford again, which I'm not because Ford customer service was so bad. I'll never buy another Ford, much less give them the business of buying another new vehicle from them. So screw you, Ford. Um, so not really considering it, but the Raptor Ranger, um, which we could do in a separate video, but I'm not really considering it, does have also have 435 pounds of torque. But all these other ones, you can see how far behind they are uh, in torque. And I know a lot of you guys probably don't understand the difference between torque and horsepower, and you think you do, but you can't make horsepower without torque, right? There's some equations involved. I'm not going to bore you with that, but basically, horsepower is torque times RPMs. So horsepower makes your truck fast, but torque makes your truck efficient. It makes your truck tow well, and it makes your truck have really good uh, wheel speed control off-road. So torque's very important in pickup trucks less important in cars uh, and fast cars and stuff. But um, every engine will have its max instantaneous acceleration at its max torque in any given gear. So what horsepower does is it lets you take advantage of gearing. You're making that torque at a higher RPM so you can put lower gears for the same road speed and therefore those lower gears make you make more torque than you have more acceleration. Um, all that aside, torque's very important. So this ZR2 Silverado with all that torque, or excuse me, ZR2 Colorado with all that torque can tow 7,700 pounds. And when it's doing that, you're gonna be in a pretty high gear on the highway because the engine's making so, many, so much torque, you don't need to be in like towing around in fourth gear or whatever in order to do it, which is gonna help your economy, it's gonna help your road noise, your engine's not gonna sound like it's screaming going down the highway, pulling a boat, going up a slight gradient, it's not gonna have to downshift four gears because it makes 433 pounds of torque. That's a lot of torque. Let me point out to you how much torque that is. That's more torque than a 5.3 Chevy V8. Uh, that's more torque than, it's almost as much torque as a 6.2 liter V8, right? Um, the only thing on here that really smokes it in torque is the twin turbo Tundra V6. But still, you know, above 400 foot pounds of torque in a midsize truck is awesome. It's really attractive to me because it lets you do a decent amount of towing with a smaller truck that can go off-road. Smaller trucks are just better off-road. They fit down trails better, they got better breakover angles, not as long, not as wide, etc. Okay, so that's the torque discussion, um, beat to death. Um, MSRP, the Frontier is the cheapest at $40,000. I'm guessing the Colorado will be around $47,000 for the ZR2, we'll see. Um, the Colorados have always been more expensive than a lot of the other mid-sized trucks, so that's one downside. Um, TRD Tundra Off-Road is also attractive at this price point. Um, you can get about $52,000. Yeah, and then um, the ZR2 Silverado is the most expensive one I'm looking at. Um, one problem with it is it only comes with the, sh the, reg the shorter bed, and it takes premium gas, which is kind of a buzzkill. Um, and then the most, if I was going to be smart and buy the truck I should buy, I would get the 5.3 um, Silverado with the max towing package because it gets the best gas miles on the list. It's got a V8, it's got decent acceleration, extremely smooth and quiet on the highway. Comes on 33-inch tires. I need to put that on here. You can order on 33-inch tires with the max tow. I definitely would. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just the best street truck for efficiency, towing, all things considered. However, off-road, basically useless, right? Low-hanging front bumper, extremely long wheelbase with bad breakover angle. Um, so bad that Chevy doesn't even publish it. I do need to put the breakover angles and stuff in this chart from the ZR2. I should probably do that. Um, those are available now. I'll have to make an update to this at some point. Um, but, yeah. I may make that update and throw it at the end of the video. So this is what I would get if I was being reasonable. I may, I may actually order one of these, um, but I really want one of these because they both have front and rear lockers. And to me, that's like the holy grail of off-roading is having all those magic buttons to play with and it's pretty fun. Yes, I have the Lexus right now I'm off-roading, but if I get one of these trucks, I'll probably get rid of the Lexus because they'll both be really good off-road and I won't even need it anymore. Okay, let's keep going on the list. Um, zero to 60, obviously the 6.2 Silverado smokes it. I'm using the numbers here for the 2022 Silverado with that four cylinder. Um, it has the same 430 pounds of torque, 310 horsepower. So I think this Colorado and the 2022 Silverado with the four cylinder probably have comparable performance numbers, but these numbers are not out yet. No one's tested it yet. 
Quarter mile, obviously, again, 6.2 is going to win. Um, 75 mile per hour MPG. So this is car and driver testing. They're the most um, the most reliable I've found for any number, but especially their mile per gallon loop. TFL truck is cool. They do a good job, but they're not really relevant to my life because they tie, tow at very high altitudes, and I don't think I'm ever going to live that far away from the water. So I don't really use their numbers. Um, but, yeah, so the Frontier, they got 20 miles per gallon. The 5.3 Chevy, 4x4, they got 21. Um, the 6.2 ZR2, um, they got 19. And then, actually, that, that, wasn't a, that actually wasn't a ZR2. That was the regular 6.2 Limited. Um, Tundra, people get like 18, some people hit 17. Tundra gets pretty shitty gas mileage for being a brand new motor with two turbos. And the Zero 2 Colorado, I'm guessing, is going to be 19. It might be worse than that. It might be like 17, 18. We don't know yet. Um, the old ZR2 wasn't very efficient, but this one's got a four-cylinder turbo in it, so it should be more efficient. We will see. EPA numbers are irrelevant. EPA thinks they all get 22 miles per gallon, which they don't. Um, lockers... Uh, rear coil suspension. So the only one in this list with rear coil suspension is the Tundra. Uh, so that's something that it wins on. And the Tundra also has available air suspension, but not if you get the TRD off-road. Um, torque. We talked about torque a lot. There's your horsepower numbers. We talked about those already, too. Um, this is important right here, towing. So if we look at towing, um, the best on the list is the TRD Tundra and the 5.3 Chevy with the max tow. If you get the 6.2 ZR2, you only get 9,000 pounds roughly of towing capacity. You can get 13,000 if you don't get the ZR2 package, but if you're going to get the 6.2, you might as well get the front and rear lockers, right? So what do I need to tow? I usually tow one side-by-side, -side, maybe a side-by-side -side and a four-wheeler, maybe two side-by-sides, um, maybe a boat here and there that's five, 6,000 pounds. So really, all of these can tow enough for me, um, but obviously, if you're towing half your towing capacity, it's a much more comfortable ride, and it's um, going to be more efficient. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's yet to be seeing how efficient this motor will be towing. Uh, I haven't seen anyone do a real, real good towing test on that four-cylinder yet in the Silverado. But TFL Truck did do a good towing test on the uh, Pro, Pro 4X. They towed an FJ Cruiser um, through Ike's Gauntlet and it did pretty well. So um, I think it's safe to say the new Frontier tow is pretty decent with its new 9-speed transmission. Now that gets us down to transmissions. Um, Frontier is a 9-speed. The Chevys have 10-speeds. Tundra is a 10-speed. The ZR2, as we talked about before, has the shitty 8-speed, so that is the one thing I really don't like about it that makes me not want to get it, so I'm going to put that in red. Um, and then farther down here, we get to um, off-road numbers, ground clearance, uh, whatever. The uh, Pro 4X has the best ground clearance. It has the best approach angle on this list. Um, I do need to add this stuff for this truck, so I'll probably going to add that and come back to this. Um, crawl ratios, though. The Nissan has awesome, awesome crawl ratios, very low gears. Um, it does only come on 32-inch tires, which is annoying. This is important, low range. Put this in here because a lot of people forget that these two Chevys right here, um, this one has it, but the other one doesn't. So this LT Chevy, if you want to get low range, you have to add the ZR2, or excuse me, the Z71 off-road package. And if you do that, you lose your uh, max towing package which means you lose your 342 gears. So I would rather have 342 gears on a street truck um, and 33 inch tires than low range. Unfortunately, uh, you can't get both on the Silverado. So that's one of the reasons I didn't buy the Chevy back when I got the Ram was because I couldn't configure it exactly how I want and I, it might stop me from buying it again. What I really want is this 5.3 Chevy with low range with 342 gears and 33 inch tires, all terrains. If I could actually build that truck, I'd probably go buy it right now but you cannot configure it that way. And that's because Chevy is concerned about their fleet average fuel economy. So they won't let you do a bunch of crazy stuff. They kind of have these pre-made trucks you can buy and it's really, really annoying. Now, would adding low range really affect the fuel economy? No, it wouldn't. Um, but unfortunately they have the fuel economy low range tied to the, um, with the packages. So if you want low range, you gotta get like a trail boss, right? Well, that comes with a lift kit on it, which hurts your fuel economy. Um, so they don't give you the low gears in it to make it decent and they do stuff, stupid stuff like that. So they I mean the trail boss comes on smaller tires than this one. The trail boss comes on 32s, but you can get the max tow on 33s. Chevy plays all these games with these different packages to get you good economy. Uh, one other thing I'll want to discuss before I add in some numbers here and come back to this off-road area is the, um, the, the Chevy diesel. Everyone's like, why don't you get the Chevy diesel straight six? It's super cool. Well, number one, it's slow, and number two, it doesn't save you any money. So 26 miles per gallon on the highway, according to car and driver, 
versus 20 miles per gallon on the highway with a 5.3 V8. Um, actually, car driver got 21, but I rounded to 20 here. But I, these are all formulas, so I can actually update this very quickly. Um, so say 21 miles per gallon. Say I drive 12,000 miles a year. Average cost of fuel in Florida right now is 5,000 or 5,000. 500 for diesel and 386 for gasoline. Um, that's the average statewide, apparently. Um, those numbers are from, I think, AAA. Don't get mad at me if you don't like them. Um, but yeah, so gallons per year, uh, 461. Gallons per year, 571. So it's burning a lot more gas with the V8. But that fuel is so much cheaper, it's actually burning less fuel cost. And then the diesel has DEF. So the diesel is slower. It costs you more in fuel. I don't really see why you'd buy it. I mean, a straight six is cool, but it's not that cool. Diesel also is a $1,000, $1,500 upgrade over this motor. So that's why I'm not considering the diesel in this chart above. All right, so I added a little more info to the off-road section of this chart. Um, this stuff might not be exact, but it's close. So um, Chevy says the ground clearance is really high on these trucks. I don't understand how a... Um, 6.2 Chevy on 33s has more ground clearance than a ZR2 Silverado also, or ZR2 Colorado also on 33s. That doesn't make any sense to me because this is like a bigger axle. So whatever, but that's what they say. Um, not sure where they're calculating that from or what trickery's went on there. Uh, approach angle is pretty good on the ZR2 Silverado. Departure angle is also really good and breakover angle is also really good. So. The 6.2 Silverado is a, a bad bitch. It's not a Raptor or anything like that for, as far as off-roading stuff goes, but it's got some pretty good off-road numbers. Um, crawl ratio is decent. you got to remember it's got a 6.2. It comes with 323 gears in it, which I think is dumb for being like the big bad off-road truck, but whatever, we'll ignore that. Um, pretty good crawl ratio. Um, it's comparable with like the Tundra, and it's got a big, you know, naturally aspirated V8, so I'm sure it's got plenty of torque. The crawl ratio on the LT Max Toe is terrible because it doesn't have a low range. So the only reduction you get is your 4.7 in first gear and your 342 in the rear axle, which gives you a 16 to 1 crawl ratio, which is bad. You know, you need low range to get a good crawl ratio. But again, it's a V8. Um, it's pretty torquey at uh, 350, where's the, what's the torque? 383 foot pounds of torque. So it'll probably be okay, um, especially because no one's going to do anything hardcore off-roading with it. But towing off-road through Sugar Sand with this truck you would be working that transmission a little bit, but the 5.3 comes with that new 10 speed and it'll probably be fine. Um, so I added that in there, kind of interesting to see, um, you know, whatever. Now, what I really wish would happen is that the 6.2 ZR2 would come on 35s, like the Raptor does and the uh, TRX and whatever. I mean, you can get a Raptor on 37s now. Um, so that would be cool. I don't have the ratios for the ZR2 Colorado for 2023. They'll probably be about the same as the old one. Um, you can use the eight speed and calculate those, but it'll have plenty of torque, especially considering that it's got 430 pounds of torque and it's got low range. So that won't really be an issue on it. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's not a truck here that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, and that's because this 5.3 Chevy, I can't build it how I want. This 6.2 is really expensive and kind of overkill for what I need. And it takes premium fuel. Um, Colorado is not going to be out for almost a year and I want something pretty soon. So if I was going to wait a while, that's probably what I'd get, but I'm not a very patient man. And it comes with a stupid transmission. Um, so maybe I'll just go buy a Pro 4X for now and see how I like it. And then maybe get a Colorado later on. But as you can see, there, as usual, there's no truck that has everything I want in it. Um, if I was being totally honest, the truck that has the most things I want would be the new Raptor. It's got the rear suspension I like. The, um, the five-plank rear suspension, kind of like the Tundra with coil springs and everything. However, I can't buy a Ford because Ford sucks. So, yep. There is my update on trucks for the new 2023 Colorado ZR2.